Yeah, it's good to be out here with you tonight. Today I had come across a, a clip that was only just a couple of minutes. And I, I posted it on my Facebook wall. And it was a message from a local... Uh, Baptist Church 20 years ago and the title of the man's message was Don't Miss Heaven and I made some comments and I asked the question who is going to speak on this subject and that message that he spoke the comments that I wrote in my new post is them words needs to be preached today. And then I went on to say, preacher, lay down your notes and lay down your outline and kick back and tell people what they need to hear. And that's exactly what I'm going to do tonight. I had another message, but this one here is sure enough off the cuff. That man is no longer alive. He died back in 2000. 20 years since that message has been made. I don't know when it was made, but he died in 2000. It's been 20 years, and 20 years ago, there was a man that was excited about telling people, don't miss heaven. And I'm afraid today that Satan is doing everything in his power for man to miss heaven. Satan is busy on every side. Satan is having an effect on people's lives. And the man, when he began to start talking, he was plum excited about telling people to don't miss heaven. And I think that if I could even begin, he started getting into some things about heaven. He wasn't reading out of his Bible. He was allowing words to come to his head. He spoke about the fact that there would be no tears in heaven. I believe that. The Bible says that he's going to wipe every tear from the eyes, the ones who is in heaven. Heaven, the Bible says in one place in Corinthians, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, and neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. If I come out here tonight and I tell you about the gold streets, we've never seen the gold streets. I don't know that we could comprehend the gold streets that Jesus used as pavement in heaven. I don't know that we could grasp heaven if we really had a real picture of it I don't really know that our minds would be able to comprehend what it really is all about. The Bible tells me that there is a river of water of life flowing clear as crystal. This is amazing. The Bible says that there is a throne that is in heaven. I can only imagine in my mind what the throne is about. 
I can only imagine what this man here has been witnessing for the last 20 years. He has been absent from his body and to be present with the Lord. His old ragged body is still laying in the grave. It's still in the cemetery. There's a tombstone over the man's head where he's laying right now. But that body is waiting for his resurrection. But the Bible says that his spirit man is with God the Father. What is he doing today? I have no clue. I have no clue what people are doing in heaven right now. I've got a visualization I think I could talk about. I believe it's a lot like the family reunion. It's like a family reunion that when you get to the family reunion and everybody's taking their food out and they're putting it on the table and the women are getting everything ready and prepared and people are beginning to show up hot and heavy. The family reunion starts at, say, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And people's beginning to arrive about one. And the men folk is walking around seeing other men folk. Lady friends are walking around seeing acquaintances of lady folks. Family that is left, that is together, visits with one another. And all the time, two o'clock is fastly approaching. And as soon as the two o'clock hour gets on the dot, that's when someone makes the announcement to welcome them, welcoming all the people that has come to the family reunion. And maybe they will even honor the oldest one that is in the presence of all the people. Maybe they will honor the youngest grandchild of the family. Maybe they will have music and singing and festival type responses to people that are there. But at two o'clock, they will ask someone, maybe somebody of the clergy, to say the blessing. I remember years ago when I went to my grandmother's house that they would always let the preacher say the blessing they would allow the preacher or one of the famous uncles to say the blessing. It was out of honor and respect for them to say the blessing. And at the two o'clock hour, that's when all of the gathering is there and the fellowship can begin and the food can be served. And I think that's where we are today. I think the two o'clock hour is fastly approaching. I do not happen to believe that we are in the closing hours. I don't happen to believe that we are even in the closing minutes. I happen to believe that we may be in the closing seconds. That Jesus is going to call for his church. And he's going to bust the eastern skies. 
And he's going to come and get that preacher up that is laying in the cemetery today. And the promise that he has is to hear the voice of the Son of God and his spiritual body is going to connect with that physical body because that physical body now has been changed and glorified. And when the heavenly body is connected to that fleshly, earthly body and it's been glorified, it joins like two magnets. And the Bible says that they go up to be with the Lord. And I believe that is the time that we're waiting on for that two o'clock hour to begin the festivity of eating the food. And I believe that's where we are. And I'll just be honest with you. I'm looking forward to that river of life. I'm looking forward to seeing them all them trees with all manner of fruits. I'm looking forward to the fact that I'm going to see a throne and I'm going to see the Lord Jesus. I'm going to see the one that gave me salvation. I'm going to see the one that has given me peace. I'm going to see the one that has given me a testimony. I'm going to see someone that loved me enough to send his only son to die so that I would be able to have that place to go so I don't have to miss heaven. That preacher said, don't miss heaven. And you know, my advice to anyone listening tonight is don't miss heaven. Don't miss it. Just make sure that Salvation has been achieved. Salvation doesn't, doesn't achieve except it comes from God. I believe that salvation comes from God. I believe it comes from the convicting power of God that no man can get saved unless they are convicted by God. I do believe that. But I also do believe that he called the whosoever. And I happen to believe that God knows who it is that he's actually drawing to himself. He knows. He knows who he's drawing to himself. And if you're out here tonight and you're thinking that we have a little bit more time before that two o'clock hour, let me tell you something. I believe we're in the seconds. Let me say it this way. At a family reunion, they don't start dumping the ice in the little red cup until right before they say the blessing. And I honestly believe that we're at the point of where they begin to throw the ice down on the floor to break up the ice so that they can put the ice in the cooler so that they can run the cups through the ice so they can dump the sweet tea into the cups and they can ask the blessing. And I believe that's what the church is waiting on. The church has a desire to go home. So see, I'm looking forward to that time that I can go and be a part of that festivity that God has planned out from the foundation of the world. I'm looking forward to that time. I believe that preacher that is dead, that is in the grave, is looking forward to that reunited body. 
And you know, the spirit of that man is in heaven today. But I happen just to believe, now I might be wrong, but I happen to believe that when the Lord comes and brings that heavenly body back to that earthly body, that heaven is going to be different when that earthly body and that spiritual body gets back to heaven. Because I believe they have been in a waiting period for uh, 20 years. This man has been without his spiritual body far as his body from earth that is turned into the glorified body He's waited on that body for 20 years. But when the Lord brings them two back together again and they go back to heaven, I believe heaven is going to be a heaven that that other person never even saw before. I believe heaven's going to be new every day. I don't believe that God designed heaven for heaven to be heaven for just the first six months and then all of a sudden we get bored. No, I believe that God, in his infinite wisdom, knew what it take, knew what it took to prepare something that would be amazing for eternity. I do not believe that people that get to heaven is going to be bored in a few months. I believe the Lord has got it all planned out that his family reunion is going to start. And when the church gets to glory, that's when the reunion is going to begin. So I'm going to use some of his words. Don't miss heaven. If you want to see that message that that preacher spoke, 20 years ago, go to my Facebook. It's under my name. Go pull it down. It's very short. It's only just a couple, two or three minutes. But go and get yourself a little bit of excitement when you go over there and listen. And the man's going to tell you, don't miss heaven. Some people may think I'm crazy today. But it was actually inspiring to me to see. And see, I told preachers to lay down their outlines and lay down their notes because people are hungry for this kind of message. And people need to be told to do not miss heaven. If you miss heaven and you happen to see this video, it won't be my fault. It'll be your fault. You have been invited. You have been invited. And it's up to you to choose. Remember in the Bible where I think Joshua, I think it was Joshua that said, choose you this day whom you'll serve. As for me and my house, I'm going to choose and serve the Lord. I hope you know him today. The way you know him is you invite him inside. You asked him to come in and take an abode in your life. You believe the gospel when you hear the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of this man that we're talking about, of Jesus Christ. You believe that he lived. You believe that he died. You believe that he rose again. You also believe that he's returning for the people like that preacher. And he's going to be called up one day in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. I hope you know him today. Elderlyministry.com is the website. There's a phone number there you can reach. Go to that phone number and call. If you need help, give me a call. I'll be glad to help you. Thank y'all for watching.